get over the rim in hoops? Yeah, I can, I can grab the rim and I can jump up. And a couple of my teammates have seen me jump up and kind of dunk the ball. The only problem is my hands are small, uh -huh. so I can't necessarily palm the ball. Okay. But yeah, I can, I can get up there and dunk a little bit. And I know you've told us that you just do your advantage, but after you have a game like that, are you, do you still feel like you're proving yourself to people out there who think, well, you know, you're not tall enough to be doing this? Always. I don't think that there will ever be a time when I don't play the game of football with something to prove. I think that's one of my biggest advantages. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, taking it. There's always going to be someone who has something good to say, and there's always going to be somebody who has something negative to say. So, you know, whether there's a thousand people who are saying good things, and if, you know, there's one person who is, who's saying something negative, I just take it as, you know, there's there's still a negative opinion. So mm -hmm. that's, that's really my view on the negative talk in a huge game like this though does it i mean you were already confident anyway but does yeah. it make you more confident or you just figured you knew you could do this anyway i would say that you know my confidence level never really wavers mm -hmm. so um but definitely having a big game like that does instill some confidence in you and more important than confidence in myself i think it just built some confidence in my coaching staff you know my o-line my quarterback the other guys in the receiver room so that's what's really important to me is just the fact that I put it on tape and they were able to see that those are the type of things that I'm capable of. Everyone says you're super humble, but is it really cool to see everyone tagging you on Twitter and yeah. the hashtag sports center top 10? Yeah, yeah. What does that kind of feel like? Absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a tough situation because you kind of want to say thank you to everybody and acknowledge everybody, but at the same time, keep a humble mindset about it and, you know, like we always say, you know, last week was last week, we got to focus on this week. So I try not to, you know, pay attention to it too much, but it does feel good to have so much support from, you know, the fans and everything like that. With uh, a couple wide receivers out last week and you came in and started and stepped up, mm -hmm. well, what was the response from the coaching staff on how, how, on how well you played? They thought I did a good job. They thought, you know, I prepared well throughout the week just like everybody else did. Um, just taking advantage of my opportunities. And this week I was, you know, granted with a bigger opportunity than the ones that I've been getting in the past. So they thought I prepared well. They thought when I got my opportunities, I made the most of them. And that's what they are the most happy about. How nice is to see that depth, even the receiving core, running backs, Ramar's mm -hmm. out, Tyshawn and Trayvon's out. Just that the depth that you guys have on offense now, how nice is that compared, maybe compared to last year where you guys weren't sure, you know, maybe it wasn't as strong. Yeah. I think it's a big help to the offense, to the team as a whole. You know, we're, we're, we're very blessed in our receiver room to be, you know, God placed a lot of guys in our room with a lot of talent. And then we have a great coach leading us. So I think the depth definitely helps to where, you know, it's the next guy up mentality. If somebody goes down, you know, the quality of play never really falls off. Guys know what they're doing. They prepare like they're going to play. And that's the most important part. So the depth is really big for us. A bye week, three weeks in, is it a good thing? A uh, chance to maybe get mm -hmm. healthy, look at stuff? Or would you rather, I mean, coming off a win, rather mm -hmm. be back out there again this weekend? Again, it just depends on, you know, how you prepare. If you prepare like we have a game on Saturday, then we'll be fine going into next week. And that's how we're approaching the bye week. Of course, you know, we want to take it slow, you know, let guys get back healthy, you know, the guys who are banged up. But at the same time, this isn't an off week. It's a bye week, you know, in the sense that we don't have a game on Saturday. But we got to prepare like we have a game this week. We got to take it serious. The, the opportunities that we do have to practice, we just got to make the most of those those opportunities. It is Pac-12 now, and we're going to play Stanford next. They've already yeah. lost twice. Right. Do you look at the conferences? I know it's each week is each week, right? That the Beavers have have a shot at this right. right at this point. I think the Pac-12 conference is really wide open. Mm -hmm. um, I think that you know everybody in the conference has a chance. There's no real, you know, bad teams in the conference. I think everybody has their strength. Everybody has their weaknesses. You know, guys are going to win games, guys are going to lose games. It's a tough conference to win in. So I think the conference is wide open, and as long as we do what we're supposed to do and we prepare the right way and we go out on Saturdays and execute, I feel like, you know, we have a shot, definitely. Thanks, Chan. Yeah, no Thank you, Chan. Thank you.